when you use the term Christian, have you ever thought to yourself what that actually means? How we answer this question may in fact change our perspective on how we see ourselves, the people around us, and even the world. What is up everybody? Welcome again to the Never Stop Project. It's your boy, A.B. If you are new here and are compelled to find the truth and purpose of your own life, please consider subscribing, hit the little bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our latest content. If you are watching this on Instagram, please go to YouTube. And if you like these videos, subscribe to the channel and watch the full videos in length there. That will really help me out. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about what it actually means to be a Christian. And let's start off by what it doesn't mean. It's not a regimen we go through every day. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. And it's not just someone who goes to heaven after they die. The true definition of a Christian can be better articulated by looking at the Greek and Latin texts. And fun fact, the word Christian has only been used three times in the Bible. That is in Acts 11 verse 26, Acts 26 verse 28, and 1 Peter 4 verse 16. All right, let's look at the Greek. In Greek, the word Christian means Christianus, which means a follower of Christ. But the Latin word goes a little deeper and it's called Christianus. When we look at the suffix ianus, I-A-N-U-S, it means a relationship of possession or origin. This is literally saying I belong to Christ, which means belonging to the creator of the entire universe. And we're finally gonna use the Bible to back up our argument. Let's look at John chapter one. John chapter one, verse one through four states, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Let's go down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I think we all know what this means, that Jesus was in fact God and became flesh. Now I'm gonna make a separate video going really in detail about this, but before I go any further, let's clear something up. Belonging to God, belonging to Christ, means you are a child of God. Now there is a huge difference between being a child of God and being a creation of God. Everyone is a creation of God. Not everybody is a child of God. Only those that claim Jesus and are saved born again are considered children of God. And here's why. Being a child of God in this age means that you have received the Holy Spirit. Something that used to be separate in the Old Testament. But now God gave new revelation and sent his Holy Spirit to dwell in us not upon us like in the Old Testament. That's why they would need a high priest to go into the Holy of Holies and so on and so forth. I will also make a separate video going into that. So now let's look at John 14 verses 16 and 17. To help you guys understand the context of these verses, Christ right now is speaking to his disciples and he says, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him talking about believers for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you so once again you know people who don't receive christ receive the holy spirit are just creations of god not children not a child of god a wise man, one of my dear friends, he once explained to me how he would wake up every day and when he would pray to God, he would say, what do you have for me, dad? I think that is so powerful to not just separate him as like, you know, your heavenly father, you know, someone we obey, but as so something more personal, like your actual dad, someone who you actually develop a relationship with and grow with 
and enjoy each other's company. You basically have this perfect dad taking you under his wing and showing you all the things that he made you to do. When I think about this, I kind of think about the scene in The Lion King when Mufasa was looking over the entire land with his son Simba. And I think to myself on how God has this huge and great plan for me and how he has a perfect will for me and how he just guides me along the way. Because when he reveals to you his perfect will for you, then you'll be able to know your true self and why you were made. Because I truly believe that you are never going to be like your true self than when you are pursuing him and seeking to be like him, like Jesus. That's all I have for you guys today. What are your thoughts on this video in Christianity itself? If you agree or even disagree, write them down in the comments and we can discuss. And once again, if you wanna talk about this personally, hit me up on Instagram at AB underscore never stops and we can talk there. If you found this video at all helpful, compelling, or just interesting, feel free to share it with a friend. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time on the Never Stop Project. Thank you.